Okay, we are currently on down on the very bottom of Sadi Aleph Amad Bez, last line, Amrle Ravina Luravashi. So we were trying to figure out what is what is the case with going between two different courtyards um, and whether or not we consider them to be the same area or not in regards to when we're carrying from one area to another area. Let me get the diagram up so we can be reminded of, of you know. Here we go. So here is, right, so here's, here's our case. We're going to do it, our case today is over, is, is over here. Okay, so here we are. So, Umiya Mamar Biochan and Hachi. Again, now on, on Saudi Bayes and Aleph. So, who said that Rabbi Yochanan said we follow Rabbi Shimon, that they're all considered to be one unified domain? The Gemara suggested that, but we, the word we see Rabbi Yochanan say that explicitly. But didn't we say that generally Rabbi Yochanan follows the Stam Mishnah? And here, there is no Stam Mishnah. So, but in, in a general, but general, who would be the Stam Mishnah? We would be mayor. So, what is it? So what's going on? So, and we learned, and uh, here's our Stam Mishnah, you know, um, that we're that we're trying to learn out from for our case of different Mishuyo. Can you carry from with see the multiple in our picture the multiple courtyards? Can we carry or not? So, Kotel Shaben Shtei There's a wall between two different courtyards. Kavua Sarah Baruch of Arba. Right, so we have our nice two courtyards. There's a wall in between, and it's ten ten tefachim tall and four tefachim wide. So you can't make you have to, you have to make two separate eruvs. You can't combine the two different courtyards. Hayubarosho perot, and if there were fruit on top of the walls, ilu oli miknan v'ochlin, ilu oli mikan v'ochlin, levad shlo yoridu lamata. Right, so each one of them can, get, can, can climb on up and eat on top of the wall, but neither of them are allowed to bring down the food from the wall, from the top of the wall and eat it in their respective courtyards, because uh, that would be a problem of of moving Rishiyot. So my lamata. So the question is, what do you mean by lamata? Lamata labatim. Bring down because doesn't mean that you. It means to go all the way down into the houses. So that's how we can say that. Therefore, that could imply that Rabbi Yochanan does, in fact. Um, follow uh, Rabbi Shimon, right? So that so that would be the question. So, so would that work, right? So again, here, ignore the earbud and low earbud um, uh, parts here. But again, there's a, there's a nice wall between the two of them. Is that can you can you do that? So, how tiny are the The vaj lo yizeh omed b'komov ochel v'zeh omed b'komov ochel. So what do you mean you could, why would you think Lamata means to bring it to your houses? We have another statement, another Brayta, saying that uh, Rechia said in the Tosefta that you can just, that you can eat it on top of the wall, but you can't have each of them standing on you, you can't have, you can't have them standing, um, you can't have them standing leaning over and eating, and you can't have them um, standing in the courtyard and eating, which means that the only way you can eat it is if you actually climb on up to the wall and you sit on the wall and eat, it, and you eat on top of the wall like Humpty, Humpty Dumpty, right? You got to sit on top of the wall. Not none of this like you know, leaning over like you're like you're at a bar. That's not that's that's too easy. That's you're basically already bringing it into your courtyard. That's no good. You've got to actually be in the separate rishos, in the separate area, the separate domain that is the top of the wall. So that would imply it's very much not like uh, like. Rabbi, Sh- Rabbi Shimon's opinion that says all of these various areas are all combined into one. So Amar Lai Vichi Rabbi Loshna Rabbi Chia Minayin Lo. So then Ravashi's response is, how, how are you how are you going to give me a proof based on Rabbi Chia? Um, Rabbi Huda Nasi didn't explicitly teach this. So you know how did his student Rabbi Chia know that you know you're not allowed to, you're not allowed to stand. But even though in the Mishnah, it's never mentioned a word about the standing in your courtyard and eating over the wall or eating in the courtyard itself. So how did Rabbi know this? So Idmar. So here's how, we, here's how Rabbi Chia made his inference. Okay, now we're at our, actually at our diagram. So we've got, two, we've got two courtyards and then there is a abandoned building structure in between them. Asat irva, vachat lo irva. One of the courtyards 
made an Erev amongst all the all the all the people living there. One of them did not make an Erev. Amar of Huna, Notin Ota Lazu Shalom Yerva, Aval Lashi Erva So we allow we 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 say the Chorba is considered to be under the control of those who made an Erev, but not those who did not make the Erev. So why don't we, so, right, and, right, so that's what we really should have done, but, right, but because, but we won't let you do that in the end, because we're worried that you're going to end up carrying from your house all the way to the Chorba, which would, and there's no air, and there, and that would be a problem, because the Eruv is, here, so what put here? So here, so again, let's, 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 let's here. Can we see, we see, we see my uh, mouse? Here, so here's the air. So the, both people who made the air of those who didn't make the air of can access the, the have direct access to this abandoned um, structure over here. The question is who gets use of that? Yeah. So if you think, so if you get to the, the one that had the that had the air of, the problem is that people would bring from their houses to their courtyard and then into the corba, which is usser. But people didn't make an arrow, so they can carry from their courtyards to the um, chorba, because those are considered to be halakhli the same rishos, but they wouldn't be able to carry from their houses anywhere. So there's a potential for somebody making a mistake in the air, in the place who made the air already, because they might think, oh, just like I can carry from my house to my court, I can carry from my house to the courtyard and then to the chorba, which is not correct, as opposed to people in the who didn't make an error, who know there are a lot of carry in their courtyard and the Chorba is considered to be part of the courtyard and that's fine. And they would never think that carrying their houses to the courtyard was no error. And that would solve the problem. So, Lafia Barab Amar. Right, so that's what we would think. Then Lafia Barab says, No, which is even so, both of them, even so, you still should say it should. Um, it, it should be it should be more likely to head towards the people who made the Arab, and therefore neither of them can use the Khurba on Shabbos. Vim Tamar Shane Mutarot, Mibname, and if you wanted to say that they are both allowed, Mibnema ain't no nin chatzer shall irba look at sarish irba. And if you want to say that they're both allowed, right? I mean they both they both should be able to have access to the to the abandoned structure. So then why did we say? Uh, the one we simply say that the, the, the courtyard belonging to the people who didn't make an Arab belongs to the people who made an Arab. So Hatam came into Mintari, Mani Debatu, Machatzer, Atapuke. Now, the difference there is that the courtyards, right, the vessels are uh, going to be protected well, so therefore people will actually, might, um, uh, they will, might actually move stuff from the, how, from the courtyards, how to the courtyards. But haka, right? So that was what we were, we were we were worrying about the case about the fruit carrying over the wall case. But our case is different. Haka bechorba, kiyom de lo mintere mani dechatzer bechorba lo ati lapuke. The reason why we're not worried about the people in the chatzer making the mistake of putting their things into the chorba, and we could even say that they're both allowed, um, is because by the case of the chorba. Nobody would really leave. It, would would think of bringing their 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 utensils, right? Their tools to the um, to the abandoned um, area because there is no good wall there, right? If you leave your stuff there, probably can get taken. So well, you wouldn't leave your stuff there, and that's how we solve our and that's how we solve the issue. So alternatively, it can be solved as follows. You could do Amri. Here's another version of the of the discussion we just had. Right, even the people who made the Erev in their courtyard, so both the people who made the Erev and didn't make the Erev can both use the Chorba on Shabbos. The Im Tamar, Shtei and Asro. If you want to say that they're both forbidden to use it, the fish ain't no nin chatzer, shalom erva, lo chatzer, shirva. That's because you can't give the courtyard of, of belonging to somebody who didn't make an Erev to somebody who made an Erev. That's why you can't carry between the, um, the, for the I for the utensils and the tools that have been in the courtyard already that had an Arab, why they can't be carried to another um, courtyard. So Hatam came on Dementory, Mane Debatim, Bachatzer. There, since there is a wall and it's protected, you would end up carrying from the houses to the Chatzer. Therefore, the people who have made the Arab, they can't even use the Chorba because you might end up moving from the house to the, to the courtyard to the 
um, to the Chorba. Well, the Chorba, lo minturi. Right? Sorry. So you might, sorry, with the case of, of, of two chatzers, you might take from one chatzer to the other chatzer. That's the word you might actually do. Go from your house to the courtyard to the next courtyard. Which would be which would which would be a problem. But on the other hand, are we worried about you carrying to the chorba? No, because people wouldn't people normally don't leave their things in a place that's not protected properly. So well, yes, I might think I'll I might leave my stuff in my neighbor's courtyard. I would never think of leaving my stuff in the unguarded, um, abandoned um, house. Therefore, we're not worried about the case of the Khorba, but whereas we would, we would be worried, and there would be the Xeri Rabbanan of you're not allowed to carry from the courtyard that has an air to the courtyard without an air because we're worried about you making a mistake and bringing stuff in your house to the other person's courtyard. Okay, this is clear before we head on to the next Mishnah. Seeing some nods. Okay. So now we're again. So this is so this is a new Mishnah, but it's not new concepts because we've actually discussed these concepts before. So here we go. So gag, gadol, samuchah katan, hagadol mutar, fakatan asur. So if we have a big, we have a large roof connected to a small roof. So the so you're allowed to carry in the on, on the large roof, but not on the small part of the roof. Okay, that's the diagram on the right, right number forty three. If you have a large courtyard that opens into a smaller courtyard, the dola mutera utana asura. If you have a large courtyard to a small courtyard, you can carry in the large one, but not in the small one. Because we say that the small courtyard becomes like the entry, the entrance to the large one. Okay. So So the question then is, why do you need to teach us both about the courtyard as well as about the roof? Should you say they're both cases of a big of a big area and a small area that are both Rashid Yachids that have multiple people that multiple people have access to? And therefore you should be saying that they work the same way. Right? Why do you need different why do you need a specific case for a roof versus for a courtyard? It should be the same. So the Rav, no, this is according to Rav. So Katani Gag Dugirachatzer. So, so for Av, you're right, that would be a good question because um, to, to, to teach you that they, they, you, in fact, do compare them. Just like you require the courtyard to have recognizable walls, similarly, the roof needs recognizable walls. And similarly, and similarly for Shmuel also, you say the roof is like, it has certain things you can learn out from it compared to a courtyard. So, right, so, the, so according to the, according to Rob, what is the important difference why you can carry from the large but the small one? That's because of the notice here, the little with the little olive, the gifufe, which we've spoken about in the past. So there, there's a, there is a when you you can notice there there are walls. You notice the transition between large area to small area, and that's and that's why it works. On the other hand, for um, right, and that and that works the same whether you're on the roof or whether or not you're in the courtyard. Works great both ways. However, Shmuel, the point comes down to um, whether or not you. Um, when, um, the, what, would, what would forbid it is not why the small forbidden isn't because of um, is it because of the walls because people are going back and forth right so therefore you'd say that the right so those things so the question is which is the the so depending on which way you're reading it is which is the unified principle that connects the two and that's why we'd have a difference between, that's why we need to have both statements we just both to teach you whether well, Rob or Shmuel, you learn something else that that, that apparently you wouldn't necessarily have thought applied to the roof, applies to the roof. Okay, so again, and for and part of that also was in regards to the question of if there had if it had been walled or not, right? So then, right? So Rob's whole thing is assuming that there is walls around the whole roof that you can recognize and go, whereas Shmuel's comes down to do people go back and forth from this roof to that roof, and that's the main question. Again, as I mentioned before, we're assuming that this is that, that again, the, the reason why there's a lack of 
of an actual wall around the, this roof means that this roof is presumably pretty low to the ground with intense volume. So you're not required to put a machitza on it halakhically because of ta'asem, not put a fence around your roof, your roofs. Because um, if we say that, because if you did need to put a fence around your roof, then well, maybe the same case. So we differentiate between the you know building code versus a roof code. So uh, yeah. Okay. So all right. Now we're gonna re now we're gonna get to a uh, to another case related to this. So. Yativ Raba Rabbi Zeira Raba by Rab Hanan Yativ Abaye Kabayu. So now we have Raba Rabbi Zeira Raba Bar Bar Hanan and Abaye um, and Abaye are are are, are sitting. Yativ Akamim. They're sitting and they're and so and now and this is what they learned about. Shamina Manitin Diure Gadola Vaktana Vein Diure Ktana Vaktana. So this implies that the rights of the large courtyard will override those of the small ones, but the small one will not override the large one. So this is a rather, a little bit of a cryptic statement. So we're trying to figure out how does this exactly work? And what, what do we mean that you can, from our mission, that seems like the large, again, yeah, so here we have our large, right, we have our large courtyard and our small courtyard, sorry, left one is the courtyard, the right one is the roofs. So again, the one, of course, is the larger one seemingly wins. Right, my house is bigger, therefore I get it. So, again, this seems a little strange. So it's like, why would that be? Like, they both have roofs. Why does one? Well, they both have courtyards. Why does suddenly one suddenly losing out? So now we're going to explain what we mean by, mean by that. Okay. So, it's also, here's an example of what we're saying: why the larger one wins and the smaller one loses out. If the person who has a larger um, courtyard decided to plant a vineyard inside of it, right? So he's planted a lot of grape of uh, grape vines in it. Then the other one is going to be forbidden to the smaller yard is going to be forbidden to plant um, a grain there or any other crop, right? They they could in theory also plant you know vineyards there, but they couldn't they they couldn't they couldn't uh, else. And if he had planted, the people who the smaller court, you decided to uh, plant in the end, right? So then that would mean that the he has to that all of his whatever he grows in his little courtyard is forbidden. But the but the one for the, the vineyard is still permitted. Right, so one violates kilayim and one doesn't violate kilayim of mixing of uh, of of different of, of, of different types of plants. So kafani bakatana utar lizrotagdola. And similarly, if there were uh, and conversely, if the small courtyard had planted grapes, the large one is permitted to plant as well to, to plant grains. Okay. So we're saying this is this is how we're saying there are certain benefits given to the large one versus the small one. So we'll get to exactly why, um, right? So the answer is because it's basically because we they're not considered to be connected. So that's why the larger one is has all these great rights. Right? And so again, so and, and as far as being again, you don't notice the um, here what's the, what's the big difference? So we, as we mentioned before, the difference between the large field and the small field is the existence of the um, both is the existence of the gifufe, right, of these of the noticeable walls that you go from A to B, right. So again, if you to look at this more, again, yeah, we can look at Chospa, who described this more at length, but I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll regal that, right. So the, we'll do it pictorially because a little bit easier than, than, than trying to crunch through, than trying than, than choose your Chospa during da. So, right. So you see, there's again that is the little gifufe here, little walls here. Sorry, that's here. Sorry, Chospa adds these extra. Um, walls here, um, right? But simple things like the fact that, that when you walk through the large field to the small, to the small field, it, it, you see it narrowing. So that's considered luckily to be a valid wall to differentiate the two of them. So that wall is only useful from the side of the large, on the large courtyard, whereas the small courtyard doesn't have that. So this is this isn't so this isn't really a statement of oh we're being mean to the to to the poor person who has the smaller yard. We're simply stating. Nope, it's simply halakhic, and the question is, does do you consider there to be a wall there or not? 
So, and we said in the second case, right? So, right? So why is why the why the letter plant up so close? Is because the answer is because the gefunim were planted in a mutter fashion. And then the people on the right, so the person in the large courtyard, right? So he had a halachic wall extending over here, covering up the, 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 the small courtyard. Since he has a halachic wall covering up the small courtyard, he welcome to plant whatever he wants over here and doesn't have to worry about the planting of the of the um, the the climb issues of there being grapes over here and grains over here. Okay. Uh, I'll take that as a yes, I hope. Okay. Um, okay. Isha, and similar case where we say that the relation between the large and the small is Isha Bagdola Beget Bakhtana Mikuresha. So if we are, did you a picture of the, of, of the, nope. Okay, never mind. Go get a picture of the next case because we don't. Okay, so, so, okay, so this, in this courtyard, so a, this woman owns both of them. So if you were to give her, if the woman is in the large, so the woman owns both courtyards. So, so somebody, so a husband's trying to divorce his wife. So the woman's in the larger one and the husband's in the smaller one and he's had to place the get into the smaller one. That would be a valid placement for the purposes of kitten, it's not considered to be in her issues. Even though she's technically in the other courtyard because the larger, the smaller one is subservient to the larger one that would work. On the other hand, Isha, Bakhtana, Beget, Magdola, Enemit, Goresha. But if you place the, if the woman had been in the smaller courtyard and you placed the get in the larger courtyard, even though she does own both, she's considered to not be in that Rashut right now. And therefore it would not be a valid divorce. Um, just general note, um, if you're going to, if you're going to go through, through a divorce, it's generally advisable to do so in the most respectful way possible. Um, if you're somebody who is, never do these, all the cases like Barbara's up and getting about like, you know, oh, if I threw it here this way, I put it on a, on an animal. It's like all these weird cases, like never do that. That's like the word, that's like the recipe for disaster. It's, uh, yeah, don't, don't do that. Um, yeah. But. Yeah, somebody clearly, was clearly, clearly the husband was having fun at his wife's expense, and therefore got to the, these, these cases. So yeah, just don't do that. Um, yeah, even when there are again, yeah, and thank God we do have divorce. Unlike um, again, yeah, not that it's good, but yeah, let me read, it's better than the alternative um, of there not being a divorce, um, which is what happens with the church, and that led to Henry VIII killing off his wives in order to not divorce them. For more on that, again. British said so that's sorry that's French that's French history. Anyways, moving on. Um, so yeah, uh, so, Rabbi. She, yes. Question. Uh, she owns both the Katserot. Correct. You're, but you, you're supposed to. But she I, doesn't. There's no Kenyan. Is that so? That, would this uh, also apply to a Kenyan for a Kalim or anything else? Correct. Is that if you if she's trying to cone something, it has to be within her Dalad Amo. Yeah. So right. Right, so we say that if if she owns the whole yard, it's considered to be as if it's in her dollar amount. If she already owns the whole courtyard, so therefore you wouldn't necessarily need to give it to her. You could in theory give it to you know, say if she's you know sitting in the yard, sitting in the yard, you know, relaxing, um, then then that would be that would be fine. So, but not vice versa. If she's in the small yard. Great. She's in the small yard. It's as if is in yes, she still owns that other yard, but it has to be in the area she currently is in. Right. So it wouldn't work. Okay. Okay. So yeah. now a case that might sound well, now we get to a case that sounds a little bit familiar to us in the age of outdoor minyanim. So Tisha Bagdola Bayakid Bakhtana Mitzdarfid. So there are nine men in a larger courtyard. And one of the smaller courtyard, then they are mitzarev to be a minion. Tisha bachtana of esa bagdola and mitzarev. On the other hand, if you had nine men in the small court courtyard and one in the large courtyard, it would not, they would not combine to make a minion. 
Okay, for more on how this plays out and 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 uh, and uh, in terms of how to make a minion with the various again for that there's a whole bunch of interesting chuvas you're welcome to read through uh, relating to minia to out, outdoor minions and porch minions and you know all sorts of other questions can I have a minion where everybody's in their own little cubicle because they're in their own COVID box again for that please see uh, the various shoot coronas that have, been, that have been published and the various things they're in it's very fun to read through. A lot of those figures are based on our Sigurd and Erevin. So again, fascinating things to read through, um, but not quite for now. Okay. Um, so similarly, we have another case. Let's say, so Bagdola, Asturla Crook, Kriyashma Bagdana. If there is uh, fecal matter in the large courtyard, you can't um, read uh, Kriyashma in the smaller courtyard. So Bagdana, if there is fecal matter in the small one, Mutar lekrok kriyashma bagdola. On the other hand, if there's, uh, right, so here, so say, at what point does the fecal matter gain ownership? So only when it's in the large courtyard, now it's in the small courtyard. This is also with the, this is also the caveat that you can't actually smell the uh, fecal matter. If you can smell the fecal matter and it's you know, disrupting your ability to focus, right, because it's so disgusting, then it would not make a difference whether or not you are in a, um, uh, it would not make a difference where it is. If you could, if you have this really strong smell of fecal matter, let's say if you know like your your neighbor happened to have um, just you know uh, re uh, fertilized their um, their lawn and it smells horrendous, um, you might need to wait until the wind blows the other way in order to dive it. Even if there is a, a very much halakhic wall between you and them, you still should. It's still not just supposed to dive when it smells to the point where you're like gagging on the air. Okay. Um Amrlahu Isra. So this implies that there is such a this whole this multiple statements we said. This implies that we can have a wall that makes things worse than if there is no wall. So what do you mean by that? Shomale ein machitza, marchik arba amot bazareya, ilu hash nasura. So the thing here is that generally we have this rule in Kalayim that Either you that how do you differentiate between regions of planting? So normal. So here do we see the here's a good picture uh, here. Um, here we go. Here. So normally what you would do is you would you would say here okay, here here are our are, are nice are nice trees. So then you you put a four ammo gap, and then we can plant right four ammo to top, and then you can plant right there on the left, right again. Right, the whole field's fenced in, there's no problem. Right? Again, as long as you have a formal gap, it's fine. Yeah, we can shore the formal gap by putting actual walls in between. Um, so like or or even halakhic walls, if you remember back from the very beginning of the um the staff, we're talking about the steward the, the steward of Patak of the of the of the very smart uh farmer who um trained his grapevines to go over four posts in order to make a, um, and then use those as a steward of Petach as a, and then and therefore halakhic wall to allow, to allow it to plant on the exact other side of said steward of Petach. So there, so, so again, that notwithstanding, assuming we didn't make, we haven't used any halakhic walls differentiation. Normally, if you have a distance of four amma between the two, then we say there's no worries about kilayim anymore, they're not growing into each other. But here we're saying that even though the gap seemingly is more than four amot, it's usher. So how is that possible? Right? How is the wall making things worse? Wall is supposed to be helpful, not hurtful. So Amr lai, Rabbi Zeir labai. So Rabbi Zeir responds back. Are you sure we ever found a single time when a wall is problematic? What do you mean? We have a case where we found that the wall is hurtful. We have a large courtyard that opens into it. That's 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 that there's a gap that that there's a gap and it opens into a smaller courtyard that you're allowed to carry in the large courtyard, but the smaller courtyard because the small courtyard is considered to be the opening of the larger one. So. So therefore, those walls are making things worse. The ilu kufeha. Similarly, if you had, even if you'd um, smoothed out the gifufim, right? So that's these guys over here. Um, that'll still be a problem. 
right? So keep, sorry, this uh, there's other there's other thing in there that too. So Gifufe is yeah, let's scroll back up for an for easier here. Yeah, Gifufe are, the, are these things, right? On the edges here. And if you smooth the edges, right, there'll still be usser, right? The small one is gonna be usser no matter what. Because again, when you have the large one, there's walls. So this small one, there aren't walls. So it's gonna be an issue. So log, so what's the difference there? So I'm relay, no, you can't compare those two cases. Why is the case of the small of when there's a gap between well again when you use a large courtyard to the small courtyard, we say that you view the small courtyard as if it's the entryway into the large courtyard, and therefore that's why it's us or even though the larger courtyard is mutar. So there is something else. There, I'm relay hot tom silik machitsu. No, that's not a case of where you're adding walls. To that are problematic, rather there, it's the case where we have removed the walls. It's siluk mechitzo. It's saying that we say that the, the walls of the small one don't count because we view the whole that that whole area as if it's an entryway. So we don't care that the walls are larger and extending. The um, so whereas in our case it would not be. Okay, so yeah, there's siluk mechitza versus, or that means that we the view the walls if it's not there for for a certain reason. That's different from the case of the wall coming in and making something forbidden. So we're still figuring out what's exactly what's going on with our case with the QI. So we're going to keep trying to figure this out. Is it, could that possibly could we could it really make it us for the whole entirety of that small court of that small um, courtyard? A small um, like how could that work? So Amrle Rabba Labai. So the Rabba says to Abai. Remember, all the there's all the various um Amorim that we mentioned were all sitting and having lunch and this when this discussion came about. So Rabbi said, said to buy Veloma Sina Machitza at least. Are you sure we never found a single place where it's forbidden, where a wall makes things worse and makes things more forbidden than they were prior? The Ha Itmar. Didn't we learn? Okay, now we're on Sadi Gimel Amad Aleph. Sikik Agabe Achsadra, Shayesh Lapa Simin Kashera. Do you put if you put on top of an, an asadra in the portico that has um zoom in here let's get to let's get to the picture of that sorry one second here we go and if we said you put slach on top of a, a, a of our nice little portico over here right so i guess now it's more like a pergola because it's being met, met, met these for circus um right so it has these these nice um more, these a little doorway type things on the side that seem in these nice doorposts. So we say that that's a kosher absaka. The ilu hishva pitzima psula. But if we but if even the doorposts by by constructing walls against the side walls over here, then that would be then that would be a problem, right? I mean, if you filled it in, right? So if you thought, oh, I want to make it nice, look nice and pretty, I don't want to see the you know the the, the, the frame, I want to you know fill it in, like you know. Drape a nice wall over it, you know, one of those nice, a nice curtain. That'd be a problem because now you only have two walls instead of the previous three or four. So, Omer Lebaye, Lidi Deep, Shera, Lidi Dechaz, Dilmukhitsu. Sabaye says, no, that's not uh, a good case. Um, this is going to take a while. Okay, so. So I guess we'll okay. So, right. So what? So by I said, our case is is that according to me, I say it's kasher because, um, uh, because I say that the, here the wall is helping us, right? Meaning because I say that the entryway is considered to be a valid wall, whereas you say it's not. But according to the corner pain, the issue here isn't that the wall is making it forbidden; it's that you have. We are removing the wall, right? Because once you put up the, once you filled in the in between the, right, we made those thick walls, right? So what you did is you filled is in. It used to be that you could count the the seam here that stick out, as it and and the surat of petach here, com, and combining with the right and the, and then we have our nice ticker on top. So we got our nice surat of petach here, and we can repeat ticker here of a going down, and we've got our nice wall on the over here. But when you filled it in, we no longer have that little extra bit sticking out, and therefore it's no it's no good anymore. 
Okay. So Tofut actually has a different um, interpretation for how, for, for again, for how, for wh where the walls were. So his interpretation is that actually, um, when we say we get the CK, Sagabab, we act, we don't mean that it was in a alleyway like this. Rather, the, the wall was the third wall, right? So basically, so again, so we say that there was a, the structure was made like a, like a, to mean gum, which uh, again, that, that's the, um greek letter gamma um which looks kind of like a, which is basically a race um right see one two right like you know a backwards race for those of us who aren't uh who, whose greek's a little bit rusty um so it says and there the issue is is that so th therefore for the, the issue would be then that you filled in these walls, and the difference is that then, so therefore, you say that on this side, you've lost one side of the Stuart of Petos, and therefore, that Stuart of Petos is gone. Both to the way that, similar according to Rashi, um, and what everybody else's issue here is that you lost not just one side of the Stuart of Petos, you lost the whole entirety of the Stuart of Petos, because now all you've got is the, all you have is a Kora, you no longer have a, the, the Stuart of Petos is gone. Okay? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so that that's the structural point. We're going to continue with this tomorrow. We got a couple more um, uh, bits on it. So let's let's sum up we've covered, and then we'll continue from this pit from these diagrams tomorrow. Okay. Because we covered quite a, quite a, quite a few cases, and uh, oh, again, if, if anything's if anybody has any questions, uh, please uh, let me know. So again, the first thing we talked about was again. Previous mission had been, had been talking about um, the fact that we consider, for purposes of items that had resided in the courtyard or roofs or the other Rashodi Yashids that are in homes, that they, that three different opinions as to how connected each of them are between the various types of, uh, between Rabbi Meir, um, uh, the Chachamim, and Rabbi Shimon about, are they, about how connected they all are. We had a mayor who said only roofs are connected. We had a chassam who said that um, roofs that roofs are connected and that corridors are connected. And then we had a Rishimun who said that literally everything that's not a house is connected. So then we were, the question was: Is there any case where we where you could say that if you're having an error that creates more of an issue? We brought the brought the case of there being a Isir Drabanan of Zerashema that we're worried that if we let somebody with an error in their courtyard carry from their courtyard to another courtyard. We'll make the mistake of carrying from their house to the courtyard to the courtyard. Whereas the home of the Mishnah, we were talking about previously, that's entirely talking about the case where the item was in the courtyard and not that you say, and you're not just moving within these outer Rashid Hayasids that are all connected, but had nothing to do with moving to a house because that would be a, a problem of violation of, of, of going from Rashid to Rashid, whereas the rest are all considered to be one Rashid. So they're trying to discuss what happens in the case where we have a partial. One or were some people made errors and some didn't. And the question is of the areas in between, do they get the other area or not? So we try to bring a proof based on the Khorba. And we said that the Khorba might be, then we said the Khorba can't be used as a proof to say which way, which way you want to you want to rule, because a Khorba, as opposed to other types of Rashid Yachids, is in is in and of itself properly enclosed. And since sorry, is not properly enclosed. A Khorba, right, an abandoned structure is. Uh, yeah, we're assuming this is a, it's at least structurally sound for now, but either way, it's not considered, but from people's perspectives of it, it's not a, it's not like your backyard, right? Your backyard, you know, it's, when you leave there, it's going to stay there, nobody's going to take it, right? Even if it's a shared backyard, you know, like, it's just you and your neighbors, and they'll be fine. But a korba, right, the abandoned um, building, so that, that everybody's access to, it's not protected, so therefore people aren't going to make that mistake. Uh, whereas other opinion says that you now people will make that mistake, and that's what we said the difference was between those two cases. Then we went to talking about the cases of about large and small areas on roofs and in courtyards, and how uh, we said how it the uh, the came down to Mahloka, um you get the question from how it works. So this is Mahloka between Rob and Shmuel, um about how it works. So Rob said so Rob is based off of the fact that you recognize there being walls, they're based off of the Gifufe, these little um, outcroppings over here that when you walk in the large courtyard and the small courtyard, you recognize it. That's why you can carry in the large courtyard and the large roof, but not the small courtyard and the small roof. And where Shmuel says it all comes down, it's not that. It's just talking about the cases that if you walk from the large one to the small one, 
Um, it's a question of you're, you walk over and you have any access there, and that's what destroys the halakhic wall. Um, so the nafkamina being that according to um, Rob, you need there to be actual walls in order to carry on the roof. Whereas the Cornish wall, you don't even need walls to carry on a roof. Um, right? You just, the main thing is that there's only one people using it, one group. As long as there's only this group using it, it's a problem. But other uh, uh, the, the issue is the groups using it, not necessarily the, the function of the walls. Then we discuss how this relates to the case of, of other cases where the larger area has a has dominance over the smaller area. We talked about, spoke about the case of Kilayim. We spoke about it in the case of uh, giving a woman a get, um, right? About how we say that the large, the smallest would be part of, of, of the large one, which is why for Kilayim that creates issues. Of, if you plant in the small one, um, it's considered to be as if you planted it into the larger one, and that creates a problem. And we said for the woman, we are giving a woman her get, so it has to be, she has to be, it has to be in her courtyard where she currently is. So if she's in the large courtyard and you put it in the small courtyard, that's okay because it's considered to be one area. But the reverse way is not the case. Similar, and we had also the case with person with the minion. So if you have the the, the, the main, if nine people's minion are in the large courtyard, but one's in the small courtyard, we say that that's considered to be um, fine because the, again, the main, the big courtyard is the primary one. The small courtyard, courtyard is the secondary thing. So therefore, that works just fine. Whereas according to uh, whereas if you do the reverse, so that would be a problem because the um, because that because that because there are two distinct areas. And similarly, when you have to the case when you have people diving in two different rooms, that's a problem here too. It's also a problem. Um, and last and lastly, we spoke about the case of the of, of the of the outside or of the portico, right? Where you're trying to use it on on circus, and we said that it works when you and we're trying to figure out is there a case where the walls are being are being helpful versus being hurtful to you. And we concluded that the walls are generally that, even though in the, in the initial case we had the Stuart of Petoff, which we said, which which according to Rob works as a wall, according to um, the other others not necessarily, according to Bayer, according to others not necessarily. So we said that the difference there when you fill in the walls, we said the problem is that either is that it rem it removes the. So we said the issue there. That's not the issue of the wall being forbidden. It's the issue that the wall by putting in more wall, you actually end up generating a case of seal pochitzo. By adding more walls, sometimes you end up with less walls. So that's not saying that the wall is making your life is making something us or like it seems to be from our case of the large courtyard and the small courtyard, the small courtyard becoming a store. Rather, um, it's because you had the throne of Petach and you basically erased it by your building the walls out farther. And yeah, and then we'll continue talking tomorrow about the cases of when your walls are helpful versus hurtful. Um, and yeah. All right, thank you. Have a good day, everybody. Have a good day.